when this family, this is show far from full show energy work. And I'm here to speak to you today about quantum sex. And the uh, reason I'm putting this underneath the Wisdom banner is because I believe this will spark in your inner Wisdom, in your inner intuition ion. And uh, the purpose, the intention ion or the intention is to have a transfer of energy with you to expand and help evolve and expand uh, what you think and feel about SEX, uh, Central Emotional Exchange. Uh, you'll see that I'm being committed to not just calling it sex, but to spell it out. And by spelling it out, I mean Central Emotional Exchange and SEX. So this video is about quantum SEX because um, at a deep level, uh, on a quantum level, on a physical level, on a central level, the S, uh, we want to take a look at the uh, at things at more atomically and start breaking this down to a very minute level. So atomic and sub or super atomically. And then on the emotional level, when we say the emotional part of, of, uh, of SEX, the emotion or emotion ion, is connection or connection ion and intimacy, right? And epigenetics. And those of us that don't know epigenetics is the study that uh, emotions or traumas can be passed through the bloodline through time and space. How is that possible? I believe because DNA works in some way. Uh, DNA, if I talk about that in Soul, Sacred Orgasmic Living, my book, the DNA divine natural awareness that that there's something going on with the connection between the mental realm and time. And so, and, and again, just to, to bring it back into this moment, I've talked about in the past, I'm bringing it back up again. You hear me when I say different words that ha have the ending ion, not all of them, but a lot of them is talking about the transference of energy, right? It's talking about how on an atomic level, atoms or atoms, how they can share electrons and, and, and form different bonds, ionic and covalent. All of that is, you know, let's get into a deeper level. But what I'm getting at is that there is a connection ion. There's a connection with that. It's letting us know that a lot of the words that we use in our modern day English or angle or angel lish, uh, angel speech, shout out to Seven Bomar. He broke down that with the angel speaking everything. We are, we are uh, speaking with our tongues and is letting us know that these different words, there's a transference of energy or inner chi or the, that the, the, our genes or genies are somehow involved, that we are spelling. And notice how the word spell, spelling, um, that it has the word spin in it. All of that is going, we're going to go into that deep on this with the quantum, right? So on the central level, we want to get more atomic or a more atomic breakdown or break up, if you will, and, and look into it at that level, at a quantum level. The word quantum means basically small, but yet if you look at the word small, it has all in it. And then the emotional, like I said, epigenetic level in the X, you've heard me say before that the X is for our awareness or for our consciousness mixed with the breath and the breath mixed with the, the, the awareness. And the breath is like that rhythm. We can't get away. We can't escape that yin and yang exchange. You know, we have, we trip up sometimes because of what has happened to sex on this planet and talking about male and female, female and male, under and overstandings or misunderstandings about gender, um, it trips us up. But when I'm talking about what I'm talking about here is polarity, and so the polarity between the mental realm with our mind and how that interacts with the breath, and noticing that the breath has the, the word breath has beat in it. as in heartbeat, and it's something that we can't get away from, you know, in order to 
to stay in existence in this realm, we unless we have some super skill that I don't know of, like um, what was it? Uh, one of the magicians back in the day, uh, David Blaine or something, he did something where he held his breath for a super long time. Most of us mere mortals, we got to keep breathing, right? And so with that being said, the X factor though, if we even expand it even beyond that, we're talking about time. What is the most quintessential and fundamental concept that our mind has a, a deep grasp on and can't let go and is even programmed into our bodies. And one of the things that I'm gonna to say too about this is that there's this overlap of different things. So when I say the mind, understand that the mental realm also is enrooted and cannot be separated from what we call flesh, right? There's this, there's not this separation when we say sensual emotional exchange. The mental realm is just as much mixed into the sensual and the emotional and they're all flowing in and out each other, just like the symbol of the yin and yang, where it's letting you know that that is the yin and yang is spinning. And you see how the, the white dot has a black dot in it and the black dot has a white dot in it. It's letting you know that the, the yang has the yin in it and the yin has the yang and they're interacting and, and changing one into the other and going back and forth. So when I say central emotional exchange and when I talk about the X factor is uh, the breath with the awareness, the awareness with the breath. And one of the functions or one of the, the technologies of awareness of the mental or the metal or the mental realm is time. It's time. And a big fundamental thing that if we really want to uh, take our sex and our being, our, our have evolution, is to expand our awareness and our thoughts and our beliefs. And actually, we can get rid of the beliefs are knowing, not what we know, because knowing is a stagnant thing, right? It's a, it's a rock that we can't even really move. When we know something, we have knowledge, but we want to have a stream, a river of knowing. Tasha? There, in the branch of uh, quantum physics, there is an idea that, first off, that a particle or say a photon or but even may even be some subatomic particles that make up atoms that they can be in more than one place at one time. That's pretty deep. And then on another level, there's another uh, train of thought that a um, that an atom or a photon uh, that they can be both a particle and a wave at the same time. Okay, so I played the video of quote unquote younger me there from a couple of years back, uh, about two years back, I think, actually, uh, I played that video there to, to talk about the two things there. Number one is that they're saying through quantum physics that an uh, atom can be in more than one place at a time, at a time. Interesting there, uh, the, the play on words too, that it can be in more than one space at a time. What about time? I want you to think about this. Could a atom be in one more than one time at a time? That 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 can hurt our brain if we if we it could sprain our brain, right? Uh, but what I'm getting at is like, could the atoms? You know that video was from two years ago. Could the atoms? that make up me quote unquote presently still be going in and out of time with that younger quote unquote younger version of me. Now, if we think of time in a linear fashion, then we say, no, that time has passed or whatever, but there are many quantum physics uh, models or theories that said time is more like a DVD. You know, I know many of us in the streaming world, we don't even know what a DVD is anymore. That's how crazy time, how quickly technology moves, but yet we don't update ourselves like that. Like, what if human beings were to grow as fast as the technology outside of us grows? That's what sensual motion exchange SEX stands to do when we upgrade and understand some of these things that we're that is being presented on it on this or whatever. When we have deeper understandings about ourselves and how we actually work. So what I'm getting at here is like they say that um, the time acts more like a DVD where 
we watch a seat, we watch a movie from the be- quote unquote beginning of the movie, and it goes around the laser, which could be like our awareness, our our ability to look at something, to focus on something, and it goes around in the DVD uh, to the end of the movie, and it's going through all the scenes. But the the powerful thing to contemplate and, and think on or feel into is that all of the scenes exist already on the DVD. You could have, we could start at the end of the movie and go backwards. We could, all of the scenes are already there. And I've spoken on this on other videos. Uh, going to be going into that again uh, on this one, but in the, the, the quantum physics video, I'll put the link below. I talk about how when we do the energy work, the SEX, central emotional exchange, the energy work and you get into the touchless orgasms, um, uh, how it supports both of those statements really, or both of those ideas. Number one, that it's beyond space and time because you can have a Zoom uh, you know, call or a, a telephone call with someone and you can go into these energy work sessions and have orgasmic energy be exchanged where people go into orgasm and you're not physically there with the person. So that means to me that it's going beyond space and really if you think about it the person could be on the other side of the world at a different time zone notice how the word time zone has one in it so they could be at a different time zone they could be in the future or the past think about that like there's something even about the way we our reality the way it, it can't the way things are we can't really be truly lied to too much is really about what we accept because think about it. Uh, if you're in California, the East Coast and J- Japan and Australia, they could be in tomorrow already. The East Coast could be three hours ahead of you. You're in the quote unquote, you're you're in uh, where you're at, and then Hawaii, three year three three uh, uh, hours rather. I think I said years. I don't know three hours after us but yet all of it is present. So so what I'm saying to us is that there's something about understanding reality that it cannot lie to us. Is even in that is letting us know that all the time is present because people can be in tomorrow already and and, or if you're at 12 o'clock midnight, if you're at uh, 12.01, you know, in California, you may have some people that are almost at the next day on the other side of the world, you're where you're at, and then people in Hawaii still in yesterday. And all of that is the present time. I hope that makes sense, but it, but what I'm getting at is going back to the other video, younger me, right, is that the atoms can be present or the at- atoms can be uh in more than one place at a time, or I believe also more than one time at a time, they call that being non-local, and then that, a, that it can act as a particle or wave. So that's how we can go into these deep orgasmic states because once we go into trance, once we relax the mind, the gatekeeper, and from there, we can now go into a wave-like understanding or interpretation or perception of reality which is always there, but we have locked ourselves into a more uh, dense version of it. Sometimes when we get on plant medicine or we have NDEs, near-death experiences, uh, deep states of meditation, uh, when we go into lucid dreaming, uh, all of these things let us know or give us an example of things being more wave-like as well. So if particles can act as waves, I want us to think about this. Time is not solid. Just like uh, if we interact with this world, you know, like uh, if we look deep enough into something, we see that it is moving. Even the most dense rock at an atomic or subatomic level is moving. Um, And if we're told that the particles and even the rock can act as a wave, uh, then what more, and and definitely we can see it in, in when we're doing the SEX, the central emotional exchange, and people can get into this wave-like 
orgasm after orgasm after orgasm, and you're not even touching them. What's going on there? Uh, all of that can be said, I believe the same thing can be said about time, that we think of time as being kind of solid in a way. And what I mean is that it's going in a linear, uh, in a line, uh, and that to me is like a, in a solid concrete way of, of that our mind has been fixed in about our perception ion, our perception of time. But the truth is, is that time is a more fluid thing. Why is this important? Well, if we talk about healing ourselves at a deep atomic level and being able to heal and uh, heal ourselves, if we talk about epigenetics and on the emotional level, it's good to have these inner over and understandings that time is nonlinear, that it's more circular. And then we start to see that we can play with some things in a really powerful way. So that's the X factor is to start seeing that time is not solid. And if we start playing with that concept, those concept ions, those conceptions and perceptions, then we will see that uh, we can start to remember the future, remember the future. And that we have an, and they also that we have an ancient future, you know, that in order for us to really glean all of the lessons from our ancestors that they were trying to, to impart and give us, is to understand that they were not talking to us in a linear fashion, uh, that many of us were our ancestors, they were actually speaking to us in a circular or in a, um, in a way uh, that would, you know, in a more holistic way, in a quantum way, knowing that through time and space throughout the moment, father time, father time and mother moment, that we would be able to decode in a quantum way and put this this uh, quantum, this uh, this temporal, you know, uh, jigsaw together, um, and not have it keep being separated. So, in order to really get the wisdom from the ancients, we have to start looking at things in a nonlinear fashion. Let me say it a different way: the bright idea that we have in this moment presently might be us remembering something that our ancestor, quote unquote, ancestor or, or our a quote unquote past life. But again, if all of the scenes on the DVD are there at one time, if all time is now, is it really past? That's what I'm saying, y'all, is that that bright idea that we have presently might be us interfacing with an ancestor, or it may be us remembering from a future, uh, a future version of ourselves. I know this is going uh, deeper on this one and everything, but it's, it, it, it's time. It's time for us to, to do this with each other and, and go to these different places. And I know that some of us, you know, I, I do different videos that don't go as deep and everything on these things. So those of you who are being drawn to this, it's probably time for, that you're ready to hear this. So that you're ready to step into that quantum sex. Pretty, isn't it? Perfectly balanced as all things should be. And the reason we need this is because, because it's time to return to balance. Uh, like you saw Thano, Thano say there, an the interesting thing there that it was a, a knife, right? Uh, because the thing about intellect and having a sharp mind, but you have to know how to use those edges because when we have a sharp mind, we can cut things. And our current uh, belief or our current way of looking at time, it cuts out the feminine. Like there is no place. The only thing about the about about our current understanding about time is that it's a circular uh, clock, right? But we, other than that, we've cut out the feminine from the concept or the idea or from the inner and understanding, the overstanding of of the moment of time of knowing, knowing, no, know, realizing how the word know, K N O W has now in it, and so breaking down things to a minute, notice how the word minute or minute, um, uh, breaking it down to this, this, the, these minutes um, and these hours and stuff and, and segmenting it and going in such a linear fashion like this and separating us, it, it is even our concept because all it takes sometimes is an idea. We were told this in the movie Incepts Cheyenne, or exception that 
Sometimes only an idea is all that it takes and that we have all brought into it, that we all accept it is enough. That if we talk about being able to be connected to our ancestors and be able to glean wisdom and have different, we can't allow these false ideas anymore. Because again, reality can't all, it can't outright lie to us in such a way that the truth is hidden. The fact that like I spoke to earlier about that we have all these different time zones that are all still in the present, that people can be in tomorrow and yesterday, all of those energies, all those realities can exist. And what we call the present, that's giving you an example that there's been some playing with the code and it's time for us to see through that. So all things must be balanced and we got to stop cut, cutting out the feminine in our idea about or our understanding, our feeling about this thing that we call time. We've got to invite some of the mother moment into this as well. Um, stop having so much chronos, interesting chronos and Thanos. And how, what was it that Thanos was fighting for in the infinity war? Notice infinity. Infinity is beyond. So infinity war, infinity is like forever, right? Infinity. Infinity and beyond, right? Like the buzz light year, right? Then the very next game, next, the next, hmm, the next game, the next movie, they turn around and call it what? End game. End game. So we went from infinite, from an infinite uh, infinity war to an end game. How about we have an infinity game, y'all? How about we end war? You see what I'm saying? How about we take take it and instead of having a, an infinity uh, infinity war in an end game? How about we have an infinity game? and we end war. Aho, stop letting them play with us, y'all. Playtime's over, playtime's over. We are decoding this motherfucker at another level and spread this, spread the knowledge to those who will listen, to those who can hear. Notice how the word hear is in heart. Notice how the word uh, ear is in heart. And earth, you take the H at the end, E-A-R-T-H, capitalize the H, put it at the front. Now you, we have mother heart or we have heart. Right? So, and we can hear her beat because we, because of our breath, the word breath has beat in it. So we can, we can, we can, we're, we're decoding this matrix, this matrix, the matrix, um, myatrix. We're, we're decoding it now. And we are. Uh, ending war and we're having this infinity game and it's time for us to step into that and to balance all things out you know father chronos father, father thanos thank you but we're going to also invite the mother in on this now and we're going to have a more quantum way of looking at things and but with those infinity stones and i've talked about this before that those stones in my opinion are our endocrine system, our endocrine system, our pineal pituitary, our parathyroids and thyroids, our, uh, uh, our gonads, you know, um, whether it be ovaries or testes, uh, the gallstone, I'm mean, sorry, not gallstone, but gall, I hope you don't have the gallstone, but gallbladder, uh, that's not usually, in the, by the way, added into the endocrine system. I do with my understanding. Uh, I, I like to add that in. Also, the gut that you know, it produces so many hormones and everything. Um, and uh, what the spleen and pancreas, um, that they're added in there as well, as far as the endocrine system. So th those to me are the stones, but when we talk about the movie Infinity, uh, the, the Infinity Wars, right? Uh, they, one of the things that they did there was they took the, what was it? The power stone, the re so it was power, reality, uh, soul, space, uh, those were four that he had. The time stone and the mind stone were the last two that Thanos slash Kronos got.
And with a snap, he was able to change reality, right? What am I getting at here? What, how, one of the things that I'm going to say with this, 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 this share today, too, is this, this is quantum. This is a coin spinning. It's not heads nor tails. We're going to get into that deeper here in a second. But with this build, with this share, um, these different concepts, they're meant to all be together. And for the information, for you, the information I on, for you to take it in and don't really, don't think about it too much. Allow what I'm saying, everything to go into it deeper. You can meditation ion, meditate and, and that allow your soul to remember, remember this information that's being shared here today. That's how the, you get the best out of what I'm, what I'm sharing here today. So, uh, so the last two stones that Kronos slash Thanos got was the, t the time and the time allowed him to get the mind stone. And the ancients, our ancestors, you know, the people from our ancestors from Kemet, a.k.a. Kamut, a.k.a. Egypt, they told us that in the Hermetic principles, Hermetic, we're going to get into that in a second, that the, in the Hermetic principles, that the universe or the all, the universe is mental. And I like to say the universe is awareness. So if we have allowed ourselves to buy into a construct, of time into a lie of time where it can't even fully lie to us is a half truth because again we have time zones where people are in different days even and yet it's all present hmm the time and the mind stones those are interchangeable one of the biggest false bs's and i talk about this in sacred orgasmic living soul is that Time and the false belief around it, the false be belief systems around it, is what locks us into a certain reality. And to be able to renegotiate that. And in that book, I talk about how time even is a as an acronym: time, intimacy, money, and energy. Energy being our understanding, understanding, and overstanding of that thing or that thing that we call God. Right. That some of us call God or Yahweh or Brahm or uh, Great Spirit, whatever that, whatever you know, the the goddess, whatever you want to call it, is some of our misunderstandings and false BS, false belief systems around it. So time, intimacy, money, and energy that locks us into a certain, uh, you know, does our makes our Kundalini, our creative force, our central creative force, be locked into a certain thing. Stop allowing these these tricks to your energy. Amen. And we have to allow our wheels. I hope these this has your wheels spinning, right? Notice how we talk about that. That oh, I can see his wheels spin. Let your wheel spin from what I'm saying. Because that another word for chakra is wheels. And uh uh worlds. And it was the brother seven, he pointed out how worlds is similar to whirl, something whirling around like a whirling dervish, right? Allow yourself, allow these, allow this stuff to whirl around in us and to spin, to spin. Notice, because this is a re-spelling, a re-telling, right? A re-spelling. Notice how the word spell, like I said earlier, spelling has the word spin in it. When we are spelling something, we are spinning it. Who is it that has been telling us how to spell things? And what is the correct spelling? And this is the correct idea and concept and thing. Fuck all of that. We now can see. And now we are spelling things differently. We spell things to decode it so that our, our more of our consciousness can come online. So don't allow the English teachers who Many of them are just puppets on a string, allowing us to tell us what we can do and how to say it. Fuck all of that. We got the blueprints now. And, you know, in many of our schools, our education, Ion, um, those were cultural thoughts. You know, it, thinking is cultural. And in many of the cultures, uh, the fire cultures or the, 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 the more young culture, some of the more uh, some of the Far East Asian cultures or whatever. 
Um, some of those cultures, we there, there's a, a thing to look at things in a linear fashion or to speak in a in a direct line way, right? Like the 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 hands of, or arms of a clock or arrow. That's all well and good. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. That's not the only way to speak. And so sometimes people from other cultures, African and Asian cultures, um, some First Nation cultures, they spoke in perceived reality in a more circular way. Uh, so I'm not saying that one is better than the other, but we cannot, again, with that sharp edge I spoke about earlier, with that sharp mind, keep cutting out the feminine. It's time for balance. All things must balance, you know? And so we need to move from a cultural perception of time uh, that is just in a year. We need to evolve from a, cult, uh, a, a cultural perception of sex, S-E-X, central and move to a more circular way, a more holistic way of central emotional exchange, that being our understanding about what SEX even is. And mixing those two concepts, we will get the wisdom from our ancestors about these things when we don't look, when we're not limited to just the masculine expression. Notice how the word masculine and man still has the ma. If you look at them, masculine and man, you got the mama, the mother still in there you can't we can't get away from the feminine principle still being in the the masculine because we all come from a mother so on the screen now you see the enso and i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right or whatever but that's from the japanese culture and it means circle of togetherness and it also it, it talks about the strength of and the circle of life the connection letting go of expectation ions and uh, the beauty in imperfection or imperfection ion derived from Zen Buddhism, uh, it simply means a circle of togetherness. And so that's in, so that's the circle of togetherness. So let's look at, and we're gonna come back to that. Remember that cultural understanding thing about it being circular? Let's look now at, uh, as, a quantum physicist or whatever, they explain uh, quantum computing. Quantum computers approach solving problems in a fundamentally new way. And we hope that by taking this new approach to computation, we'll be able to start exploring some problems that we could never solve any other way. What's this? Yeah, what, are, what do you think that is? Fancy chandelier. I think so too. We jokingly call it the chandelier. That's real gold, you know. This is a quantum computer. It calculates things, but in a totally different way to how your computer calculates things. What do you think this is? A. Yeah. Do you know what your computer thinks that is? Zero one. <laughs> Which is crazy, right? That would be like saying your computer only understands these quarters. For each quarter, you need to tell it that you're going to use heads, tails, and you assign it heads or tails. So I can switch between heads and tails and I can switch the zeros and ones in my computer so that it represents what I want it to represent like an A. And with quantum computers, we have new rules we get to use too. We can actually spin one of our quarters. Uh. So it doesn't have to choose just one or the other. Okay, so while it's spinning, is it heads or tails? Heads. While it's spinning? Oh, it, I would know. It's sort of it's sort of a combination of heads and yeah, tails, yeah. right? Would you say? So superposition is this idea that my penny is not just either heads or tails. It's in this state, which is a combination of heads and tails. And this quantum property is something that we can have in real, real physical objects in the world. So that's superposition. And the second thing that we'll talk about is called entanglement. So now I'm gonna give you a penny. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> when we use the word entangled in everyday language, what do we mean? That something's intertwined. Or... Mm -hmm. 
Exactly, that there's two things that are connected in some way, and usually we can separate them again. Yeah. If your hair is tangled or whatever, you can, you can unentangle it, right? Yeah. But in the quantum world, when we entangle things, they're really now connected. It's much, much harder to separate them mm -hmm. again. So using the same analogy, we okay. spin our pennies and eventually, <laughs> eventually they both stop, right? And when they stop, it's either heads or tails, right? Mm -hmm. So in my case, I got tails and you got heads. You see how they're totally disconnected from each other, right? Mm -hmm. Our pennies in the yeah. real world. Now, if our pennies were entangled and we both spun them together, right? When we stop them, if you measured your penny to be a head, I would measure my penny to be a head. And if you measured your penny to be a tail, I would measure my penny to be a tail. If we measured it at exactly the same time, we would still find that they were both exactly correlated. That's crazy. That's <laughs> so cool, right? Oh my God. Okay, there. So the biggest thing that I want to get from, want you to get from that video, uh, and this ties into the end, so right? This, this ties into the circle of togetherness is like when we look at a coin spinning, uh, if we're talking about being quantum, it's not head, it's not tails, but it's spinning. So it's both at the same time, right? We always talk about the head or tails, but there's a third side to the coin, right? Unless the coin has fallen, if it's still spinning on that side, that side is called an edge. And that I looked that up, the edge, because uh, I didn't know what it was called, the edge of the coin Notice the word edge, though, is like at the edge is when we're at the edge of something, we're at the verge of something sometimes. It's like right at that ledge. Notice how the word ledge has edge in it. Um, I have a poem, actually, uh, The Ledge of Allegiance, The Pledge of Allegiance, The Ledge of Allegiance. Uh, check that out. It's, it's down in my, my page, though. Uh, but anyway, when we're at the edge there of something, it means that we're almost on the verge of it. We're at that tipping point, maybe. Um, so we're at the edge, we're close to the verge of a tails, we're close to the verge of a heads, but it hasn't been determined yet. There's power in that. We've been told that it's weak, to, that that's non-decisive, but that's actually, in many cases, a lot of power to be in that state where you're both or all three states at one time. And uh, so to allow your coin to spin, remember it's spelling, to, to cast your spell of being in that quantum state, not heads, not tails, uh, on the edge, there's energy in that whirling, in that spinning, Ashe. And also I thought it was interesting in the video that the, the, the child's name, the, the, the little girl's name, her name was Genesis. Uh, the word Genesis, if you look at the first four letters of her name, gene, Genesis, there's something deep about that too. Again, quantumly, like of all the kids, that we're talking about, we're breaking this down quantumly, and that, that it would just so happen to be a little girl, uh, a, a little uh, brown skin girl, her, her name is Jean, Genesis, or Genesis. Uh, this stuff is, there's quantum messages all the time, and that's what I'm getting at uh, as we keep building and keep going deeper into this, y'all, is that all of this is part of the spinning coin. All of this these concepts are, are all together at one time. And you can handle it because you're a quantum computer by nature. We're going to go into that even more. But when we talk about uh, quantum computing or when we talk about quantum sex, it's to understand that you are doing this at all times in you and that that is where your power is, is to bring your awareness to it. So let's look at something that is called, uh, one name for it is linguistic relativity. This is the hypothesis that was first advanced by Edward Saper in 1929 and then subsequently developed by Benjamin Worf, um, that the structure of a language determines a native speaker's perception and categorization of experience. That, it, that what? That the structure of a language determines a native speaker's perception and categorization of experience. Uh, it is also, uh, the proposal that the particular language one speaks influences the way one thinks about reality. It influences the way one thinks about reality. So speaking in English in a linear fashion, it can make us think uh, and, and be closed off to the feminine energy of 
being in a circular and speaking in a, a circular way. Many womb beings, uh, and I know I've been very guilty of this and still decoding this and still working on it. It's like, get to the point, woman. You know what I'm saying? Like I've done that uh, to my sister, especially my the oldest of my younger sisters. I remember being real rude, like, get to it. Wait, what, what's the point? You know what I'm saying? Um, my mom, you know, same thing being to, with her, like, yo, what, you know, like, but that's the, the natural circular speaking uh, of the feminine. And even in, in the most masculine male, if you get into a space of actually really opening your heart and sharing and being vulnerable, you may find that you're not talking in a succinct veneer, you know, in a line like fashion. And that's OK. It's to get away from that judgment. But anyway, it's this with, with Saper and Wharf, and it's also called the Saper and Wharf theory or whatever. And it's just a theory, but I think it's very interesting, uh, is that this linguistic relativity is saying that basically our language affects our, re our, our perception of reality. And so what is it that we are, why do we just give our minds uh, of, our, of our kids and our babies and our hearts over to an education system, education ion, and just say, here, program. Why is there not more warriorship around that? Many black children or black and brown children at a very young age, four, five, six, seven years old, they're picking the white doll over the, 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 the black or brown doll. What is that about? It's already programmed in, it's already, you know, and I believe also it's already being epigenetically now at this point, you know, so even I think kids that have not been exposed to TV, they might epigenetically have that, be carrying that gene in them uh, that has been turned on or whatever to see themselves as ugly or less than as, you know, ghetto or whatever. All that to be saying, again, we want to ultimately get beyond race consciousness, right? Let's breathe in and breathe out. So coming back into the whole quantum thing, though, is that our perception of reality can be influenced by language. According to the Sapir Whorf hypothesis, the language we speak is none other than the hermeneutic hole by which we interpret everything. Yeah, it affects how you see everything. The philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein put it this way, the limits of my language are the limits of my world. The language we speak represents the whole of what we know, the boundaries by which we interpret the world around us. The limits of my language limit my world. I thought that it was interesting too that that came from a uh, guy named Ludwig, like something I know that that's one of the names of Beethoven, right? That's in his name. Uh, Beethoven spoke through music. You know, and you've heard me say on this channel before, I'm going to say it again right at this moment because it's relevant through time and space to say it here again, that, uh, that a picture says a thousand words and music paints a thousand pictures. So I thought that it was interesting that a man honing in on the limits of language also is associated by name with someone a master of music that again i'm telling you that the ancestors and the master the the the, the magic of this intelligence that is beyond us y'all we call it sometimes synchronicities that the, that that a man that is on the books quoted through time and space and now you're hearing it from my mouth you know i'm sharing it maybe you've heard this before but i'm i'm sharing the, this quote from this man about speaking that the, link, that the limits of my language are the limits of my reality, that he shares the name with a classical, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, with a, a classical composer whose music is known to get people out of their left brain, out of that thinking computer, and into the right brain of creativity and sensuality, that classical music of Beethoven, Ludwig Beethoven, that's not by coincidence, it's not by coincidence, I've go, I go to show you this video about the quantum computing to help you get an understanding, an elementary understanding. It wasn't even the teenager, it was the elementary understanding about quantum computing. And it was a young brown girl 
named geniuses or genesis. This is what I'm saying that there's an intelligence. Like we don't have to think about to breathe. We don't have to think about cellular restri restri uh, respiration and ATP and, and, and you know, the, the, the osmosis and stuff that's going on in the cells. We don't, we don't have to think about all of that. The same thing, that same intelligence, that same knowing, that same stream of knowing is in our different shares and builds when we go in a deep level and, and, and are in receptive in a deep level. Uh -huh. One of the things that I was, I'm going to say, too, is that it was talked about in the Bible, the Bible, the Babel, the Bible, the Babel. The Bible has been one of the biggest things that has helped us to babble, along with the other religious, quote unquote, holy books. Um, but they don't tell us the whole. Interesting. And so but the, in the Bible, we have the story of King Nebuchadnezzar uh, or sorry, Nimrod. And interesting, his name is over time became known as the, that you're being a Nimrod, you know, something. But anyway, he, he built this tower. Interesting that the word tower, the, the Jed, uh, the DJ, the, the Jed, where we get the word Jedi from, is was another way of talking about the column or the spine from which the Ra the, or the what the Hindus call the Kundalini would rise up with. But anyway, he had this tower and Master Yao talks about the tower as well. But the tower, right? He built this tower, and supposedly God or one some somebody didn't want an Anunnaki. Who knows? But they didn't like it. They knocked over his tower, and they made, from the story at least, made mankind to babble. In other words, to speak different language and dialects and have different dictation, dictation ion, um, and not be able to enter over and understand each other. This is where we first had a babble or we started babbling uh, from Babylon to babbling because all of this took place in Babylon. Right. And so now we're babbling. Shout out to Pliant Force, uh, my boy uh, Chad. He also has that in one of his rhymes uh, talking about, you know, babbling to Babylon and, bab you know, and everything. So here's the thing, y'all, is. I think one of the biggest things that causes us to babble. To, to not be able to understand these things to each other too, is our, our understanding or misunderstanding our false belief systems about what time is. And especially when we break uh, time into the, the acronym that I do, time, intimacy, money, and energy, to those four things, that th those four, the, our false beliefs around those four things makes us babble with each other. Let's get into some more reading here though. So we have this thing called the humanitic. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but let's go with it. The humanitic circle uh, by German, um, by a German by, uh, by the name of Zerkel. Again, I'm not going to try to read all his name because I fuck it up. But uh, he describes the process of understanding the text hermetically, uh, hermeneutically. If it refers to the idea that one's understanding of the text as a whole is established by the referent to by reference to the individual parts and one's understanding of each individual part by the reference to the whole. Interesting. Look, look at his name. His name is similar to to Hermit, and then also similar to Hermes. I'm sure Hermit and Hermes, that's where we, we get the word hermit from. But interesting that this humanetic circle where we understand the whole by the parts and the parts by the whole, you can associate that with the hermetic principles. And what is the number one hermetic principle? Is that the universe is mental, or as I like to say, the universe is aware. What's another one? The universe, uh, that there's, the universe has rhythm. And another one is that everything vibrates. Everything vibrates. That's three of the, the seven hermetic principles right there. So this hermetic principle, again, if we, to spin this thing, to spin this coin quantumly, is to look at all three sides at one time. So what I'm getting at is that SEX, we, we, it can't just be about 
looking at things on the physical level, level or central level, dicks and pussies, that's not going to cut anymore. It can't just be about the emotional connection either, although that has to be factored in there. And we also have to have a level of the consciousness in there or awareness, but awareness of what? In a trance-like state. So central emotional exchange, SEX, has to be quantum. Let that coin spin, y'all. Take that coin into your, a deeper understanding for, for yourself. And then also, when we factor in that we have to spend a new awareness around time, intimacy, money, and energy, and allow all of these different things that I'm saying today, and I'm going to say them, wrap up everything again very succinctly at the end, but right now I'm allowing the feminine to just kind of holistically put it in there. I'm speaking circularly. We're, we're make it again succinct at the end um, to drive home the point, the point and to speak in both ways. I think that's important is to, to learn how to to speak um, holistically and circularly and on the big picture, and then to get very specific and succinct. All right. So, and the Greeks, the ancient Greeks had a, a term, uh, pharmacon, uh, which it had two meanings, two opposite meanings at the same time. It meant both cure and poison. Interesting how the word poison has ion in it as well. Uh, so, or a prescription, prescription, prescription ion, right? So there's a transference of energy that's implied in those words. But what I wanna go into now is looking at a movie, looking at a movie named Arrival that came out, I think like 2016, something like that. And in that movie, it goes more into the circular language thing. I wanna go into looking at movie and then break that down some to drive all these points home. Uh, like I say, and end with this succinctly uh, at the end. So let's. Let's look at a couple of clips of this movie, uh, Arrival. One thing to point out here, look at the, look at the ship, look at how one side of the ship is flat, one, ship, one, one side of the, the, the ship is uh uh you know circular so i think right there even they're showing us the binary code of the feminine and the masculine what's really intriguing about the movie's exploration of circular writing is the story's theory that if we learn new languages worldviews, or ways of processing information we can fundamentally change the way we think we can open up to a deeper, more empathetic form of communication. I began by doing a spoken word and I realized that's pointless, so we begin to communicate with them through visual communication and that starts to work and then we get to see their amazing way of writing. And you see here that she said that, you know, trying to speak in word, you know, speak in words, and she had to give, the character had to give that up and be able to go to a more visual way of speaking. And that makes me think about our ancient ancestors, again, speaking to us quantumly through time and space with the hieroglyphs. You know, a picture says a thousand words. They knew to get people to be more in their right brain, to get the scribes and stuff and those who were speaking to the royalty. I don't think hieroglyphs was actually for all of the people. There was classism even in Kemet, y'all. Uh, so I know some people who romanticize, you know, because it was an ancient African culture and is romanticized like it was this, but it was still in the, in the Kali Yug. It was still... You know, it, we were on our descent into consciousness. So at its highest point, maybe that was beautiful and everything, but there was still classism, if not racism in, in ancient Egypt. And the if people spoke at all, because a lot of the people, the, the commoners might have been illiterate, uh, but they were given the spoke, they were given a language maybe similar to ourself, uh, from what my understanding is. And, but the, the priest and the priestesses and those, in the inner circle, the royal court, they were the ones with the hieroglyphs and who understood how to speak in pictures. In one of these dialogues, Socrates tells his pupil Phaedrus the story of how the god Theos came exhibiting his wares to Ammon, the Egyptian king, one of which was writing. Theos pitches it as a potion for memory and wisdom. Ammon is unimpressed with writing. In fact, he says, 
People will not practice using their memory because they'll put their trust in writing, which is external and depends on signs that belong to others, instead of trying to remember from the inside, completely on their own. You provide your students with the appearance of wisdom, not with its reality. Everything you do in here, I have to explain to a room full of men whose first and last question is how can this be used against us? Language is the foundation of civilization. It is the glue that holds the people together. It is the first weapon drawn in the conflict. All they can think about is how is this, going, this technology going to be used for war? And now I'm going to tell you that I feel like that was the roll up of, out, out of time as well. If you look back at some of these ancient pictures, and I've talked about this in the science of fiction, not science fiction, the science of fiction, because fiction is a science. Fiction, um, that you look back at some of these ancient pictures from different cultures, they look like they have, uh, they have a, a clock or a, 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 a watch on. I believe that time is something that has been weaponized, something that has been used to keep the herds, us, at a certain level of consciousness so that we don't expand and wake up and start seeing this reality in a much more, you, that's going to call for a complete overhaul of society if more people move their consciousness up out of being locked into an animal-like existence that in the, the reptilian brain and we start moving up to involve the limbic part of our brain and, and have the, the, the uh, understanding of the heart, the ab level of being, um, it's game, it's in game at that point. You know what I'm saying? It's in war at that point. The language we speak represents the whole of what we know, the boundaries by which we interpret the world around us. But if we think about it, the limits of our present language are really the limits of our memory, our present experience of time, as we know our language and its meaning only by the accumulation of experiences which hold together in our minds. Thus, to grow in our experience of time, adding new moments to our memory, is to be in a real and figurative sense learning a new language, a new way of seeing the world. Language is a result of experience. And if you live, limit people's experience by the language, if language is a, uh, uh, they feed into each other, but language can also be made to limit experience. And when you limit, when you limit your experience, now your language reflects that. And so they feed into each other and it creates what? A loop. Memory is a strange thing. Why are you here? It doesn't work like I thought it did. We are so bound by time, by its order. Memory is a strange thing. And what happens when we start to, to dream and remember what is so-called the past or remember the future? That's what I'm saying is that once we start to remember, remember the, the past, the future, the present all at one time and work together, this is something that SEX Central Emotional Exchange is asking uh, when we start really overstanding and doing that at a high level, that automatically happens. And that's why we've been made to be locked into a consciousness of scarcity and of focusing on just the genitals uh, and not seeing it as SEX central emotional exchange. Because when you start doing that, automatically your, your consciousness expands. Arrival was a deep movie. It talked about the concept of time. Uh, there, there, there's the symbol of time there. And, and like I was sharing with you is that our ancestors have been speaking through it to us through time and space, the Enso of Japan, these, these, the phenomenon known as crop circles, right? And we see in the crop circles, all these geometric shapes and, and how, the, the, how there's the, the um, coin, I mean, the, 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 the circular nature of it, but these geometric shapes in the circles and everything, right? Uh, that is a language. That is a language. And I believe when we, those are like yantra. And we're told that that, that, that is a science, that when we look at these things and it'll take us into a deep state of meditation and open up things for us, this is a, a technology of sorts. So all of this 
and those the, the 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 crop circles are associated with alien contact for many people. Some people say that there may be some kind of technology that human beings that we have that we don't know about uh, collectively, uh, and that that might be what it is. But I do believe that there may be something too uh, that this is a phenomenon from what we would say is non-human. That the monolith is the technology of an advanced alien race guiding humanity through its evolution. Uh, but the obelisk and the monolith, uh, how interesting that uh, it's saying that the obelisk or whatever, that monolith is a symbol from the ancestors that spoke through time and space. And then that we see in Washington that they try to recreate that. The word Washington even has ion in it. Um, but um, that Washington, they took and copied the obelisk from Kemet, Kamut, or Egypt, and they put it there, uh, or, or a rendition of it, uh, another a, a mimicry of it. and. But that that's something that that is something to look at again in a state of trance and it can speak to us in a circular way. We can get information from these ancestors and everything again, quantumly. That picture, that that screenshot of the monolith in the movie that they took it from 2001 Space Odyssey. You see you had the, the black monolith there. Interesting, the color there and. You see the sun or half sun, and you see the moon, but a half a crescent moon. It letting us know, I believe too, that they're giving us half truths or that the there's some obstruction to the messages from the ancestors. Aho, but we are decoding it. We're putting it together, and we are seeing holistically now. And the end of it all exploring will be to arrive where we begin. The end of all exploring will be to arrive where we begin. With the ancestral realm, with the ancestors speaking through us, to us from time and space, with our future versions of ourselves speaking to us from through time and space, and us being able to now step into through central emotional exchange, because central emotional exchange in orgasm, orgasm is called the, uh, I forget how you say it, but the the, the French way of saying it is like the small death, the petite uh, something, I forget how you say it, but basically they're saying that there's a small death. Death of what though? The ego, the ego, the, the smaller edging good out or evil going on or edging God out, uh, the ego, uh, that's, what, <clears throat> that's what when we have orgasm, it dies for a little bit. That's why we have such quietness of mind and a good orgasm or orgasm. Imagine being able to have an orgasmic state that lasts for many minutes or hours even. Well, that is the state of uh, that we call ozone or O3, aka ESR, expanded central response, but we call it O3 or, or, uh, or ozone, right? Because you, we're but through the breath, the ozone, right? The O3, the, 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 the breathing we're able to go into a state of being more ocean-like uh, and bringing in the pleasure, the ocean, and to have orgasm. Kirti and me have a video, we're gonna be speaking about that in more depth, but uh, it's in that state that we are able to transcend. Notice how the word transcend has trance in it. We are able to use trance to now transcend time and get messages from ancestors and our future self that are relevant in today and what we call the present. I hope. So that's how central, how quantum sex uh, or quantum SEX, central emotional exchange is relevant for you. So I promise you that I will wrap this up succinctly now. We've done the holistic, you know, and the thing is, is to like that coin spinning is to take all of those main points and don't make it about A or B, make it about all of those points together. Take that into a state of meditation uh, and look at it holistically. Look at the information ion holistically 
put it together in that way. And that's when you get the most of what, out of what was being shared there. There's stuff to build on and take it into it even deeper levels that that's, that's part of your journey. Notice how the word journey has joy in it. Uh, so with that being said, though, let's look at some of the main points again uh, succinctly now. Uh, so one is that the coin is spinning, right? It's not heads, it's not tails, because it's on that edge of the coin. It's all of these things at once. And that's, again, like what I'm saying about the even the concepts or the ideas in this video. It's all of these things at once. And we're also saying that uh, reality can act as a particle or a solid. It also can act as a wave. And what central emotional exchange helps us do is to start seeing things to, to get out of the alpha and uh, I think it's beta level of thinking or brain waves and, and to move into higher states of brain waves and to start seeing this reality and for its more wave-like quality. That is quantum sex. And so when we talk about quantum sex, the central is looking at things, we broke it down and go into an at a atomic level, right? And look at the SEX. Um, we look at that at an atomic level and uh, be or subatomic level and be able to see how the word quantum has all in it. So in other words, what I'm getting at the very first letter uh, of sex, which stands for, you know, in our, uh, our understanding is sensual, is do that, do that, even do that through the sensual that we can connect to all, right? And then when we go to the emotional, is that we are able to, we know that epigenetics is a real thing. So by working on ourselves, we can help for, uh, future bloodlines and we can also uh, get the healing from our past, uh, past or whatever, when we understand epigenetics of emotions. And then the X factor is to stop looking at time as being a solid thing. If quantum physics is telling us that at a subatomic level that the, these particles or waves can be in more than one place at a time, why can't they be in more than one time at a time? So stop looking at time as a solid thing. All right, Joe, so that's it on that one. I, I hope that this has some value for you, uh, that, that this coin that I'm offering, uh, I allow you to appraise it. Uh, maybe for you, it's just a penny, then it was just a penny for my thoughts, right? Uh, but maybe it has some, some more value for you. Maybe there's something, some things to, to unpack and go deeper in your own, in your own journey and, and, and get some more, more value out of it. Uh, so uh, it's my joy to be able to share that. And I'm going to have a deeper dot. So it's like, okay, all that information, that's great. How do I change my reality with that? Well, first of all, just decoding it, uh, just shifting our awareness. When we shine our light on something, uh, that causes a shift right away. So that can, that can ch change your life. Just looking at things different, boom, there's an expansion of consciousness. And if you want even more practical uh, you know, things to do, now that you have had that expansion of consciousness, that expansion ion, uh, you can look at my Patreon channel. And on my Patreon, I'm going to have uh, I have two, you know, three different levels. And at two, the two of them, I'm going to have meditations to go deeper into this and to some embodied meditations to deeper uh, decode and recode uh, things for us and everything. But again, I'm so far from Fosho Energy Work and Fosho Health. Thank you for coming through. And um, I do energy work for couples and singles. Me and my lady, we do that. And then I have a book, Soul Sacred Orgasmic Living. And uh, we have an upcoming uh, workshop to move from sex, lowercase, genital-based sex to S-E-X, Central Emotion Exchange. We have a webinar, it's gonna be co-ed. Uh, and again, thank you all for coming through, y'all. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for taking the time to, to, to the only way that a coin is even valuable, right, uh, is 
when there's an exchange and when where there's an agreed upon value, you know, like who cares if one person just makes a coin if there's not an agreed upon value between, you know, we have to agree on these things too. So I appreciate this exchange. And um, again, look for the upcoming videos where I'm going to be talking about sex and money, aka coins. That'll be coming soon. Y'all keep that SEX in your life. Keep shining, keep evolving, and do so exponentially. Oneness.